all of our recordings in progress. Um, and thank you to all of our interpreters. Um, from somebody who speaks English, it is absolutely beautiful to hear uh, so many voices from just around the world. And I, I really appreciate your time and energy that you're putting into uh, interpreting our presentation tonight. My name is Ian Jones. Um, I am the principal, the proud principal of Denver Online. Um, I have been an educator since the year 2001. I actually started my career as a middle school teacher um, and worked in both traditional and alternative settings. Um, I spent five years in the early 2000s in, in, as an instructional technologist, uh, working with teachers and school leaders around integrating technology into classrooms. Um, my background is in instructional systems design um, with very deep connections and experiences in public education. I've spent my entire career in public education. Um, in 2010, I opened an online charter school uh, and began constructing a model for education. By 2014, I had decided that I wanted to go back to the uh, public school districts, um, just philosophically, much more aligned to the public school districts and their mission. And over the past seven years, I've been leading uh, Denver Online High School, and we have built courses, created a community, and created opportunities for students um, through college options, certification pathways, work-based learning opportunities, and post-secondary opportunities. We've also put into place effective practices and resources to support students in achieving their personal goals by capitalizing on the flexibility of the digital environment to do big things for kids and with kids. Our students are achieving and exceeding expectations in a variety of environments and career paths. And that makes me excited. And that's one of the reasons why I'm with you this evening. In my personal life, I'm the proud dad of two boys, one, both of whom had uh, continuation ceremonies today. My younger son is going from fifth through six to sixth grade. And my older son is uh, just finished up eighth grade and is heading into high school, um, which is just exciting for me, but also sad for, you know, it's bittersweet, if you will. Um, my wife is currently a fourth grade teacher. She's been in education uh, since 2001 as well. Um, and, as you can imagine, education is the uh, topic of conversation in my home. When my wife and I aren't dreaming up solutions to the challenges in public education, I enjoy skiing, traveling, especially to beaches. Um, I do realize that I live in a landlocked state, but it's okay. I make my way to beaches whenever possible. I enjoy working on home improvement projects and my personal hobby for the past six years has been coaching both of my son's flag football teams. I've actually had the opportunity to coach pretty much the same two groups of children um, two seasons per year for the past six years, and it's really been a highlight of my life. Throughout my years in education, I've maintained a significant focus on digital spaces. Over the past seven years, I've had the unique opportunity and uh, honor through De Denver Public Schools to explore strategies to bring a human approach to the online world and to establish equitable, personalized systems that support students in identifying and pushing toward their personal what's next. I don't typically like to ask kids, what do you wanna do when you grow up? Because most of us in this room today probably don't know exactly what we wanna do when we grow up. But uh, it's those opportunities that we capitalize on now that lead to more opportunities in the future. And so I talk to kids about what's your what's next? What are you doing next? And uh, it's a common theme at Denver Online. So that's a little bit about me. Today, I'd like to give you just an introduction to Denver Online. Talk with you about the process for enrolling for the 2021-22 school year tell you a bit about who we are and what we do. Um, also talk to you about what we believe about online learning 
and what we don't believe, what programs we have available, how we support our students, and how we build a community and culture that we've built over the past seven years at Denver Online. One thing you need to know about Denver Online is that this is nothing new to us. We've been operating as part of Denver Public Schools for the past 17 years, 17 school years. Uh, since 2003 is when uh, Denver Online opened. We began as a school of six students. And this year we served over, actually the past several years, we've served more than 270 students. 85% of our current team has been with the school more than five years. And that guy in the top of the picture, his name's Casey Burton. He's been with the school since it started in 2003. He makes incredible connections with students and his connection with students is really what I model a lot of the way we support kids um, in De at Denver Online because he just makes amazing connections with kids. He never forgets a face and he never ever forgets a name. Um, as students graduate high school, Casey is the guy to whom students consistently point as the person who they will always remember from their high school career. And for me, he's probably one of the best professional friends I've ever made. In fact, most of our graduates and our families consistently point to our team members as the push that they needed to succeed. As a team, we're proud and we celebrate that. It means we've done exactly what we came to work every day to do. Next year, I'm excited to extend our model of personalized learning, whole child supports, and innovative options to grades six through eight. Tonight, I'm gonna to talk to you about our high school. I'm excited to do this work in expanding Denver Online High School because I believe we're going to be able to align our middle school to our current high school model and impact the opportunities for a younger population of students by developing the skills that they need to do this well at a much younger age. And to me, that's exciting. This year, Denver Online was named as the 21-22 DPS remote option for grades six through 12. Any family who wants to take advantage, excuse me, wants to take advantage of a remote option and learn remotely will become a Denver Online student next year. During this month, we are in the process of an opt-in window. It's the family decision window. It lasts from May 10th through June 4th. Um, this is how families enroll. They go to the, the portal and they basically opt into remote learning for a one year opt in period. Their families who, opt, who follow this process will have their 21 22 choice reserved for the 22 23 school year should they decide to go back to their school. Obviously, my goal is to make this next year the best year of students' lives so that they have absolutely no intention of returning anywhere. But that's just me. If families would like to return and they use this opt-in option and this window, they will absolutely return to their first choice um, that, they, that they got through the round one of the school choice process. There are a few things that families should consider when they're choosing an online school for their child or choosing online learning for their child. Um, this works well for some students and not for all. Um, when you're making your decision, I do ask that you consider how well your child engaged in school during this remote learning year. While we operate a little differently than maybe your homeschool has operated, it's still a good indicator of whether or not things are gonna go well this year or not. Um, students must maintain a certain level of responsibility for their education with the support of our staff. Student-teacher relationships and communication are absolutely critical to the success of a student. 
Supportive adults, meaning school team and family members, are critical to helping a student engage, communicate, and follow through with the school structures that are in place. Student schedules should have them engaging with school approximately 30 to 35 hours per week. It'll be a mixture of live and independent learning. I'm a firm believer that a balance of the two is absolutely necessary for a child to get, produce the, show what they know and get the feedback from their teachers. And so we have to give them that time to produce, but also give them that support of live sessions. Revision is always encouraged and always incentivized. What we're asking students for is not perfection. What we're asking students for is their best effort when they're completing assignments so that we have, have the ability to give them good, actionable feedback. And then students, finally, students should be encouraged to engage with the culture of the school, to engage with clubs, groups, and activities of the school. Or if they have outside opportunities, they should engage with those. Because isolation is a real concern in this environment. And we want to make sure that our students are healthy and they're happy and they're ready to learn. So it is best when students do not feel isolated, sitting in front of a computer all day long with no other outlets. So as you're making your decision this evening or by June 4th, I do ask that you consider these things um, as in determining whether or not this is right for your child. The timeline right now, just to give you an overview, this is our opt-in period. In June, I'll be holding a series of welcome meetings for families who have opted into our program um, to give you a more in-detail overview of what the school looks like. We'll also complete a student intake form so that we have some information about your child so that we have the ability to best personalize this experience for your child. In July, we'll send some welcome messaging, some orientation communication, really just gearing up to get the school year started. And then in August, we'll have technology distribution for folks who need it, as well as student meetings with our school counselors and their mentor teachers. And then on August 23rd, we're gonna kick off the school year with the first day of school with orientation, a middle school meeting, high school meeting, mentor teacher contact, live sessions will get started, and week one of our academic content will be posted. So that's just an overview of what things are gonna look like throughout the summer. I'm gonna be one busy guy um, and I will be, I will be creating some things as we're going, but for the most part, Denver Online High School, we've got what we need and we're just ready to get, get started and expand our influence and really serve a greater, greater part of DPS. So tonight I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the Denver Online way, how we do things, how we work, how we want to support your child and your family as you venture into the world of online learning. We start with what we call our six commitments. These are what we believe are the six commitments a student needs to make and a family and our staff needs to make to the success of students. And during our welcome meetings, we'll talk about each of those roles. Tonight, this is just a broad overview of what those six commitments are. The first one, engage. Show up, bring your authentic self, bring your ideas, attend your live learning, complete your work and collaborate with others. It's basically show up, be there, be present. The second one is communication. This is a big one for me because I'm a firm believer that communication in this environment is absolutely critical. We hold ourselves, our team, to what would I call the 24 hour rule. That means that if a family reaches out to one of my staff members, my expectation of them is that they're back with that family within 24 business hours. The reason I say business hours is because all of our staff members are human beings too. We have families, we like them. 
We can't be on call all the time. However, we do want to be responsive to your child and we want to make sure that they get what they need to be successful. The third one is follow through. Follow through is essentially do what you say you're going to do. Make plans, show up for them, make things happen. If you have a meeting scheduled, show up. If you make a plan with a teacher, do what you say you're gonna do. We strive for growth in everything that we do. Our team strives for growth, whether that's professional growth, personal growth, academic growth, however that growth looks, that's what we want from our staff and from our, our students. To that end, we give actionable feedback for students so that they know what they need to do to demonstrate that growth. We ask for students to read that feedback, to ask questions about it, to get extra support, and to, to just continuously focus on their own growth. This is where I am today. This is where I want to be. Everything I do in between gets me from here to there. With that growth comes perseverance. We ask our students to persevere. I'm not a believer that perseverance or resilience is something that we just are naturally born into. Perseverance, resilience are taught, they're trained. Um, everybody makes mistakes, everybody has failures, everything, everybody has things that happen in their lives that may or may not be within their control. And I believe that everybody also deserves the opportunity to bounce back. And so that's what we talk about with our students and then giving them the tools to act and the resources to bounce back. Because you can't just do it alone. There's gotta be a team behind you. And then finally, and potentially most importantly, is advocate. Students need to speak up for themselves ask questions, ask for help if they find themselves struggling. Our staff encourages that of our students. The difference between an online classroom, if you will, and a brick and mortar classroom is that my teachers don't stand in front of 30 kids on the day to day. <clears throat> Therefore, we don't necessarily see body language. As much as I've tried to teach our staff about mind reading, it's not going well. So I would definitely encourage you and we encourage our students to speak up and ask what they ask for what they need. Identify when they're struggling and know that there's people behind the scenes and in front of them that can help. Where does this all fit in? This fits in to what I call our instructional model. I'm not going to go too into detail here, but you can see the commitments represented as a base of that instructional model as well as the school-wide structures that are designed to promote students being successful with demonstrating these commitments, as well as humanity and just understanding that we're all humans working in a world that is very digitally based and digitally focused and, and knowing that there are humans on the other side of the wires. But then when we move up through the model, you find data processes, so opportunities for us to analyze data around students' academics, but also their engagement and how well they're adhering to those commitments and giving them the coaching necessary to be able to be successful in, in attaining those commitments. When a student needs help with that, time, ten, intensity, and focus ensues. So the idea is, is that we, we intervene, we respond, we make sure the kids are, are supported. We set goals, we identify supports. In a lot of cases, we identified outside community-based resources for our students. We have clear processes. And then we celebrate often. We celebrate the successes of our students often because everybody needs that pat on the back regardless of where they are in that process. We do try and establish a network of support at our high school um, using what we call our mentor model, which is every teacher serves as a mentor for students, a mentor to support engagement, 
social emotional well being, and advocacy if we need to escalate an issue to others on the staff who can help support. Um, that would be our student advisor slash counselor, whatever you want to call that. Um, and that just wraps around the students. And then we also have a series of intervention supports for students. So whether those are social workers, whether they're interventionists, whether that means special education, whether it means 504 support, or whether it means gifted and talented support, that's what we're designed to do. And that's what we've designed our program to do. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Our motto here is that we teach students, not courses. So when we talk to our teachers about, you know, what they're what they do at Denver Online, they teach students. I don't teach an English class. I teach students who are enrolled in my English class. And I think that that's a really important distinction to make so that all of us just continue to remember that humanity that comes in the educational process and not forget and not think that somehow the technology is doing the teaching and not think that the technology is doing the learning. Teachers teach students, they don't teach courses. Every day, students will have a morning mentor meeting with their teacher mentor as part of that advisement course. During that mentor meeting, they're gonna do social emotional learning, talk about current events, current issues, academic planning, um, to make sure that they're keeping up with their individual career and academic plan, which is a graduation requirement. And then they're also going to be doing some future ex explorations, talking about that what's next and giving them opportunities to be exposed to various jobs, careers, pathways. Um, that mentor model also includes strong teacher-student connections. So you've got somebody who you're connected with as a mentor, and that person can connect you with other teachers in the school. If maybe advocacy isn't your best, your strongest area right now, we're going to provide that support to make sure that you're, you as a student are okay and that you're on the right track. Um, in our courses, there's a careful mix and a careful balance of whole class, small group, and individual tutoring available. Um, the whole class live sessions happen once or twice a week, this, which frees our teachers up to do small group and individual tutoring for students who may need some additional support, some additional feedback, et cetera. Um, we also have a wide range of social emotional support, including our social workers. We have a school psychologist, and we actually have a partnership with the Mental Health Center of Denver, who provides us with a clinical therapist to support our students with virtual therapy. The last thing that we want to make sure that students understand is how to learn to learn. In the education world or in the psychology world, they call this executive skill or executive functioning. This is the ability for students to be able to plan, to organize, to prioritize to control their emotional responses, to, to initiate tasks, all of those things, super important to the learning process. And most of us in this room who are adults probably didn't learn these things until we were in our early 20s. We're trying to make sure that our 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 year olds have these skills so that they go on to whatever their what's next is and are successful. Our motto is do more. We wholeheartedly believe that this environment truly allows students to do more in their communities, in their academics, in their lives. There's a certain flexibility that comes with a digital learning environment. We don't want students going to school in their pajamas. We don't want school staying or kids staying at home all day, every day. We want students to experience their community, we want them to excel academically um, through our concurrent enrollment program, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, and we ultimately want them to participate in life outside of their homes. So I was part of a school before I came to Denver Online. We had a t-shirt and on the back of the t-shirt, it was like the top 10 reasons 
on why to do online school. And one of the top 10 was, I can do school in my pajamas. That's not our focus here. Our focus is making sure that kids learn the skills that they need to get out of their homes and go and tackle the challenges in the world. Our students at Denver Online have opportunities to participate in clubs, support groups, social events, field trips, service learning projects. All of these things are uh, nurtured, fostered, and included in what we do. Um, depending on the size of our school, I'm not ex exactly sure how that's gonna look next year. But these are components that are near and dear to me that I'm committed to making sure that we're providing to our students. Opportunities to connect with other kids as a community. Because that's one of the pieces that I think parents and students have a perception that is missing from online school and probably has been missing during remote learning because that was emergency learning. This is design learning. Just gonna talk to you a bit about our academic programming, something that I'm very proud of what we do. Um, I do wanna call out that these, these next few slides have a lot of words on them. <laughs> They're probably not my best design. They have a lot of words on them. Um, I'm probably not gonna read them all word for word, but I will do my best to address them all. But I just wanted to give everybody a heads up. There's a lot to talk about with academics and I wanna make sure that folks know what they're getting themselves into. <laughs> Told you. Um, Denver Online, learning at Denver Online includes teacher design online courses. Seven years ago, we did a um, review of the various curricula that, were avail that was available for high school, created by vendors. We reviewed them all. And ultimately, we decided that none of them had exactly what we were looking for. And so we spent a few years and a few summers building our own courses, and we continue to build our own courses because that's the key as a teacher and a student. It's not about turning a page through a piece of software. It's the interaction that you have with a teacher. It's the interaction you have with engaged students that make a curriculum rich and vibrant. So we've taken the DPS curriculum and we've done our best to digitize it as best we possibly can. We've had to make some modifications here and there to make it work in the online environment. And we continue to make these adjustments along the way. Our courses have consistent structure to them. So one class, you should be able to see one class to the other. There's consistency there in how it's designed. It's not the same because there are individual differences there, but there's some consistency. There's a thread that goes through every course that is developed at Denver Online. Our grading categories are are consistent as well. So our teachers have gotten together and they've decided that there are three grading categories and everything falls into those three buckets. Competency is number one, collaboration or live sessions and skill building. And those three grading categories are what drive the grades in our courses. Feedback and revision are absolutely encouraged, nurtured, celebrated. And because of that, because we, we believe as a team that feedback and revision are probably one of the more critical pieces of the learning process, revision is worth 100%. There's no partial credit. There's no half credit for revision. It's incentivized for our students to dig deep in the learning process and revise their work. We are NCAA accredited for all the athletes out there. Um, students who are athletes always ask that question. Uh, several years ago, we went through that accreditation process and we are NCAA accredited. We do have a partnership with Colorado, Colorado Digital Learning Solutions, acronym CDLS. They're part of the Colorado Department of Education. They're actually funded by the Colorado Department of Education. Um, they are all Colorado teachers. We use them um, when we have courses that a student wants to take that we may not have yet developed. And so we use them to 
fill some gaps around some elective courses that a student might want to take. Some of our world languages. Next year we will have Spanish, but um, some of the other world languages that students may want to learn, CDLS does a pretty good job with that. Um, within our courses, there's oppor opportunities for low risk practice. One thing that I've seen over 11 years now of in the online environment is that there's a perspective among teachers sometimes that if it's not graded, it doesn't get done. We're firm believers that practice leads to competency. And so our students need to engage in that practice in order to get competency. However, practice isn't high stakes. Practice is low risk. Practice yields feedback. Feedback yields revision. Revision yields competency. And that's what we're looking for out of those skill builders is for our students to engage with them, know that it's not a risky situation. It's just for them to learn and grow them to the competency. Our competency measures are typically project-based, writing. We try and make them as authentic and real world as possible. All of our parents get Schoology accounts. We do operate in Schoology. Um, I'm sure if you've been in DPS this year, you're very familiar with Schoology. Uh, if you've been in the DPS middle or high school this year. We've been using Schoology for the past seven years as our primary learning management system. Um, our parents and guardians get access to Schoology where they're able to view students' grades or drill down to the question on the assignment that the student didn't get correct in order to support their student. They also have the ability to message with teachers directly and ask questions and get support. So this is a partnership with, with parents and guardians and with our, our school support. And so we wanna make sure that things are as transparent as possible. Focusing on exploring varied perspectives, um, I think this is definitely a huge, uh, huge piece of what we wanna do is make sure the kids are getting a broad perspective about the belief systems, the cultures, the languages, the the lifestyles that others are living. And so we ask students to bring their authentic self, to bring their views, and to grapple with uh, challenging concepts. We also have support for our students with disabilities, our multilingual learners, as well as our gifted students. For our students with disabilities who are supported by an IEP, um, this summer we will be reviewing incoming student IEPs and uh, holding transition IEP meetings to ensure that this is the right fit for your student, that this is, a, this is a natural good space for your student to be so that they can be learning in the best way possible. Concurrent enrollment is a big draw to our school. It's what brings students to our school a lot of times. If you're unfamiliar with the term, Concurrent enrollment is the ability for a student to take a college class or lots of college classes while they're still in high school. Over the past five years, Denver Online has spent approximately 10% of its budget on college classes for its students. Out of our roughly 80 graduates this year, 55 of them earned college credit. This is a really, really important piece for me, for me and something that as a school leader that I have built out with complete intentionality because I believe this is a good thing for kids and something that I myself would have benefited from as a high school student. Next year, we'll be offering some in-house concurrent enrollment courses with our own teachers. This is nothing different than traditional high schools do, but it's different from what we've done in the past. In the past, we've focused solely on our partnerships with I can't even count how many colleges in and around the metro area and around the state of Colorado, because we can serve kids from all over the state of Colorado, not just in DPS. But next year, we're going to be offering English 121, 122, Math 120 and Math 121, and then our Media Graphic Design 101 and 116 taught by our teachers. It's my hope that this creates a bridge for our students to 
the next level, getting them to that college campus to take those college courses, especially for some of my students who are reluctant to try. This gives them the support from the model that Denver Online has built with the rigor of a college course, with the future of taking courses either on campus or online through one of our partner colleges. Next year, we'll also have a few AP offerings that we'll be um, engaging with. We already offer AP Computer Science as one of our courses. Um, we will be offering AP Earth and Environmental. And then I'm looking at either psychology or human geography. It kind of depends on who I hire for my social studies position. So <laughs> we are working on um, identifying which of those two we're going to offer. And this is a small step for us. Um, it's a it's a step, you know, it, it's a step in in the direction of pulling in more AP courses, but it, it's it's a work in progress. Our students, we have students every year, um, typically anywhere from five to 10 students every year who enroll with the Ascent program. If you are not familiar with the Ascent program, it is a Colorado program that offers a student um, who has earned 12 college credits. And I believe they have to maintain a C average, I believe. Um, it offers them an additional year of high school, all spent on a college campus and paid for by state funding. The Ascent program is incredible. We have lots of students take advantage of it because it's just a good deal. Um, our students also earn technical certifications and college credit through M Emily Griffith Technical College, as well as CEC Middle College. Both of those programs are our partners. Um, the benefits to college offerings is the school pays the tuition. Typically, families pay the um, books and fees, although families uh, who can have a demonstrated need, we work with the family to cover that as well. Um, Students earn high school credit and college credit simultaneously. Some of these college courses count for that competency requirement for graduation. Some college courses yield additional high school credit. So in an English course, a concurrent enrollment English course actually counts for, an, for one semester, actually counts for an entire year of English credit. So there are some nice benefits to taking those college classes. Our students participate in college visits and DPS events around college and career readiness. We just wanna make sure the kids know that they've got the option, no matter who they are, where they came from, if they're a first generation college student or a fifth generation college student. I wanna make sure that the kids know that they've got that opportunity with them online. And then every year in about February, we host what we call planning for success. Thank you, Brittany. Um, I could talk forever about this. If you don't mind, uh, I'm probably going to go over. Thank you so much for spending this time with me, but I am going to go over time just to let everybody know um, if, uh, if, if that's okay with all of you. I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep going. So forgive me. I didn't plan things well. Um, in every year in, in February, we host our planning for success event. This is literally a college and career fair that we host. We bring in outside agencies to do, um, we set it up like a mini professional conference is how we do this. Um, so there's always a keynote speaker. We do three rounds of breakout sessions, depending on families and what they, what they wanna jump into and, and experience. And then we end the day with a college and career fair where students are visiting booths with, uh, with representatives from those institutions. I was trying to keep things slow so that I could make sure that interpretation was going well. Um, next, we have our career and technical pathways. Um, we manage two career and tech pathways at Denver Online, but these are the activities that lead up to those pathways. So we, every student takes a career and tech foundations intro course um, as a ninth grader. We have, career, we have career exploration events, which are basically job shadows. We have career chats with uh, business partners in the US and all over the world who join uh, those career chats with our students. And then we also have the career coach mentoring 
program that connects a student with uh, a business partner from around the Denver metro area. Two years ago, our, part, our business partner was Amazon and they did an amazing jo job working with our students. The two career pathways that we manage, and there's a third one listed down there, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, um, are Tech Connect. The Tech Connect program is really focused on um, coding, software engineering, information management, web design, the nuts and bolts of web, web design, the programming that's involved with web design. Um, starts again with that foundations. If you can hear my dog barking, please forgive me. Um, it just happens sometimes. Uh, and then uh, it leads to in their third year, they take the Java certification test um, to become a JavaScript programmer. That's as a junior, our students are getting JavaScript certification. These children are then able to go out and get jobs, freelance JavaScript programming jobs that can make them money. <laughs> Java programmers make significant money. And in two years of offering this certification, we have never had a student fail our JavaScript test or the JavaScript test, the certification test. Um, on the second pathway is, career, is a Creative Connect pathway. Graphic design, web design, illustration, web design from the aesthetic perspective. So does it look good? Um, making sure that students have that opportunity to explore um, their creative side it starts with drawing and painting and really gets into digital media design. And then we also host the entry level um, course for the Ed Connect program, which prepares students for some pre teaching uh, pathways. If a student isn't interested in the pathways that we offer, we work with the CEC, um, which is another school in Denver, to get them enrolled in some of the pathways that they have available at CEC. Um, CEC is a career and technical education focused school, and they accept students from all over Denver uh, to come in and participate in some of those pathways. Work-based learning. This is where I talk about the flexibility. Our students regularly participate in internships and apprenticeships. The difference between an internship and an apprenticeship is an internship is short term, unpaid, and student gets credit for it, but it's a, it's a short period of time. It's a taste. They usually are working on a project with a company. Um, we've, we, this semester, we had three interns who did just some amazing work. Um, and then there's apprenticeships. Apprenticeships, it's a, it's a competitive process to land an apprenticeship. It's through CareerWise Colorado. Um, it's competitive. Students have to go through an interview process because essentially they land a job. This job is a paying job that they work approximately 16 hours a week and they make a two to three year commitment with that company to work for them. So for some students, this takes them from their junior year to their senior year. And then a year after they graduate high school, they still have that job with that company. And in a lot of cases, that company is providing them with professional development. And in some cases, um, they're paying for part of their college education so that they can continue to move up and be promoted within that organization. As far as student supports are concerned, and this is a huge piece of what we do, we offer social emotional supports through our social workers, our therapist, a school nurse. Our students access, access the DPS school-based health centers that's set up with Denver Health. Um, and then we also utilize every resource that DPS has to offer in any case that comes our way with a student with, or a family that they're needing resources. Academic supports, we have a college and career readiness counselor. We have a couple counselors, um, or we will have a couple counselors next year. Um, we have special education support, 504 development and support, multilingual education. Next year, we will be um, identified as an ELA E program. So that's an important call out. Um, that means that we offer, we will be offering an English language development block and um, to our students who need it. And then also supports that are embedded within our courses. 
gifted and talented programming for the past five years. We have run at about, we have enrolled approximately 20% of our students identify as gifted and talented. Um, we work very closely with the DPS gifted and talented department to make sure that those students have support to meet their needs, which are in many times unique. Um, and then we just have a commitment to equity. Um, our school has developed this year, our black excellence plan. We focused on the performance and support of our students of color to make sure that our students of color are moving into a space of excellence and moving into the spaces that um, are going to provide them with the opportunities that they need to be successful. And so we've definitely developed a strong focus around making sure our black students and our students of color are supported, identified, and seen. I think that that's a really, really big piece of this. And then technology support. Um, for students who need a, a computer, we'll have one available for them. For students who are in need of internet access, we can help with that too. We will have a school tech support person on call ready to help a student um, with whatever it is that they need uh, when it comes to accessing school. And finally, we have a vibrant community. Um, one thing that's nice about being the school that we are is we really don't have a lot of traditions. So if a student comes in and says, hey, I'd really like to have this type of a club, then we figure out how to create that for them and find students that can connect with them in that club. A lot of our students like social events. So we start our year typically every year, except for this one, this past year, with a back to school barbecue. Um, that's our counselor and I behind the grill up in that top picture, um, flipping burgers and enjoying time with our families while they walk by and eat our food. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful time. We typically have games and just things outside in the back of our school, uh, our campus. We do have a campus at, uh, in the Smedley building up in Northwest Denver. We will be using that as a drop-in learning center for students who need some additional support and they can sign up and work with some, with some teachers. That'll be available to our high school students next year. Um, field trips. Now, our field trips aren't typical. Sometimes they're academically focused. Other times, it's just for the heck of getting kids together because we wanna make sure that our kids feel connected to each other, connected to the adults in our school. Service activities, um, from time to time, there are different things. We've done some work with Children's Hospital Colorado. We've done some work with Habitat for Humanity. Just so we try and uncover some different service activities that we can get our students involved in. One, because it's a good thing to do. Two, because it's a really good thing to put on their resumes as they apply to colleges and scholarships. Clubs, groups, organizations, um, those, some of those icons are some of our clubs and groups. Um, we definitely support our LGBTQ students um, with our GSA. We have a student activist. Oh, I just went past my slide. Sorry. Um, we have a student activist club that focuses on social issues. We have a music club, believe it or not. Um, we have a performing arts club, believe it or not again. Um, we have a book club. You probably can believe that. And then we also have this little icon down the bottom here, which is our um, Technology Student Association. We affectionately call that robots and paintbrushes because it's basically a merger of our Career Connect programs, our Creative Connect and our Tech Connect. And those kids come together to make some pretty awesome stuff. They're working right now on a video game that they're gonna be submitting next year to the TSA conference, which is the Technology Student Association conference. So yeah, so this is Denver Online. This is who we are. Um, we're trying to break the mold when it comes to um, what, what it means to be part of an online school, what it means to be part of a digitally based school, what it means to be part of a, uh, a networked community. And so if you do have any questions, I would encourage you pop those into the chat box and I'm happy to answer as many as I can. And we'll just go for a few more minutes. Um, also, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I will put my um, email address in the chat box as well. So that if you would like, if you have a specific question, um, I'm happy to try and answer that. 
just know that my inbox is incredibly out of control right now. And it may take me a little longer than that 24 hours to get back to you, but I will do my absolute best or I will get you in touch with the person who can help you the best. Questions? Feel free to unmute or put them in the chat box. Either one is fine with me. How do you get internet help? Um, so when a student enrolls with us, they will identify um, through the uh, through the meeting with their their um, school counselor or their mentor teacher, depending on which which one they feel most comfortable with. They'll just kind of identify that with them, and we'll work on uh, getting them internet help. We'll probably also have a question in there on. Uh, on the intake form that asks, do you have reliable internet at home? Um, that can mean one of two, internet help can mean one of two things. One is we like to get students connected with the Comcast Internet Essentials Program, which offers significantly discounted internet for families who are in need. Um, and then DPS also has been uh, supporting students with internet uh, through a another program that we have available. So we'll just kind of try and determine which is the best option for the family and uh, do our best to make sure that students have access to school. I think that's the most important thing. Other questions? Yes, lots of information to take in. I, I totally agree with you. Um, I totally agree with you and there's lots to get help. Uh, there is a lot to get a new student help. Um, and whether they're a freshman or not a freshman, we're gonna make sure that they've got what they need to get started and be, be successful. I totally agree with you though, Talik. <laughs> Is there a senior, if we are a senior next year, we will get classes we need to finish off? Absolutely, absolutely. That's what, that's what a school counselor's for, is to, to look at the credits that you've earned so far versus the credit that you still need to earn. I can't guarantee it's next year, just depending on um, where you are with your credits. But that being said, it wouldn't stink to spend an extra year with us and hang out, right? Um, I'm a firm believer that it's not about when you graduate, it's about that you graduate. And I think that uh, it's just an important call out to say that we're gonna work with students on their unique timelines. And um, depending on where you are with your credits, if you're a senior and you're ready to graduate, we're gonna make sure that that happens. And um, if you do go to our Facebook site, because we are on Facebook, uh, our graduation from this year was actually recorded and is posted on our Facebook site. I highly encourage you to watch it. I would say it's hands down the best one you'll ever see in Colorado. What time does school start in the morning? That is an excellent question. Um, we will not be starting our morning mentor meetings until at least 9 a.m. Um, I'm a firm believer that students, especially high school students, need the ability to get an adequate rest so that they can be prepared for uh, for the day and for what the day had, all the challenges that the day has ahead. Oh, thank you, Monica. <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh, sorry, I, I emailed to the wrong thing. Let me email everybody. Here we go. I was emailing to one person specifically. There you go. It's in the chat, jot it down, take a picture, whatever you need to do. And if you need to reach out to me, don't hesitate. But just know my inbox is crazy right now, but I will I will do my best to get back in a, in a reasonable amount of time. All right, I don't see any more questions coming in. Um, like I said, if you have questions, drop me a line, no worries there. And uh, otherwise, thank you so much for joining me this evening. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, can't really say that I talked with you because we didn't have a whole lot of conversation, but um, I do appreciate the uh, your listening, your time, and um, hopefully I'll see you next year. Have a great evening. <laughs>